This is Rodney from the Masculine Journey Podcast, where we explore manhood within Jesus Christ. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Sit back, enjoy it, share it, but most of all, thank you for listening and choosing the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. Let's make some fruit salad today. Oh, oh, oh. Come, Mr. Taliman, tally me banana. Welcome to the Christian Car Guy Radio Show. I say this calls for action, and now, nip it in the bud. Nip it in the bud. You got to nip it in the bud. Lemon tree, very pretty, and the lemon flower is sweet. But the fruit of the poor lemon is impossible to eat. Bob, can I just say that Marvin Gaye had a voice? <laughs> Did he have a voice? It had been a while I'd, uh, since I'd heard that. I believe it was on the Fruit of the Loom commercial or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. But today's show is fruit salad. Yummy, yummy. And for those of you who ever listened to the Wiggles um, sing fruit salad, it's one of those mind moths that you can... <laughs> I'll share you the... Cor- I'll spare you the chorus... <clears throat> other than to say fruit salad, yummy, yummy. So you might guess that we're going to talk about fruit today on the Christian Car Guy Show. And I know that immediately you may think of lemons, like I, I you know, like the lemon tree. But that, that, that's, that's too easy. You know, we're, we're going other places. <laughs> so, you know, I love the, hey, Mr. Tolly Man, Tolly Me Bananas. Did you know, Bob, really, this is just a little fun fact that I really enjoy. That what he's talking about is, have you ever done tally marks where you would one, two, three, four, five, and he'd draw the line through? That's what he was saying. Tally my bananas. In other words, you go one, two, three, four, and then you draw the line across. That's tally marks. I've used them a lot, but I never knew what they were called. Yeah, they're called tally marks, and that's what he was wanting him to tally his bananas. So Time to go. tally up. And strawberry fields, there's some fruit. And for those of you who are really fruit lovers, I bet you might have caught that that was the Orange Blossom special. That little violin concerto there, which I certainly loved hearing. And, of course, I heard it through the grapevine. So, Have you ever danced to the Orange Blossom special? I have. It's You're fun. a flat footer. <laughs> <laughs> I can see those long legs out I, there. I try, but I, you know what? Tammy. <laughs> so, anyway, herein is chant John 15, 8. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. And so, ye be my disciples. And so, what does that look like practically? Have you you seen that in your life somehow? Or you've seen somebody that was just like bearing much fruit? So much fruit that that you just said, man, God must be in that because it's just beyond cool. Or have you ever felt like you were not bearing much fruit? (laughs) No, I'm not kidding, brother. Uh, Yeah, I know. I've been through spells in my life where I just felt like, Wow, you used to do so many good things for so many people, and and then you know you're not doing things for other people, and it and it starts to drain on you. And uh, it's been brought to my attention that I uh, I need to pay a little more attention to to the calling and uh, answer a few more calls and and make a few more calls and contact some folks. Wow! And I got those opportunities presented to me this week, and. Part of them has me sitting in that chair, you oh. know, when I listen. Well, good. Well, good. I'm so glad. We're going to talk about it. There's different kinds of fruit. There's good fruit, and then there's the kind that you got to nip it. <laughs> 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 We're going to do talk about oh. that a little bit later. But the good fruit, so Monday night, 
you know, you know, I cut my finger with the hedge climber, trimmer. You might be familiar with that story. And you might be f- familiar that the following week, I got an infection from that into my leg and I ended up in the hospital. What you may not be familiar with is that the following Monday night, my wife is like, so every Monday night we just go to the hospital. So do you have a standing appointment? I guess I do because <clears throat> all these biotic antibiotics got to my stomach, I thought. And I woke up, but well, I didn't wake up. I couldn't go to sleep Monday night until finally I said, I guess we're going to have to go to the emergency room because I just had this pain in my gut. And you know what? We got down there, and you know what the doctor told me? I have a cute, it's really beautiful. It might, they, they said it was cute, diverticulitis. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen a, a cute, have you ever seen that, Beth Ann, a cute diverticulitis? <laughs> I've seen a cute. <laughs> But it's not cute, is it, Robbie? <laughs> oh, it was. It and more antibiotics and more like, oh, what a what a what an interesting week I had as a result of all this. But as I was sitting in the hospital waiting room, you know, waiting for all the stuff, they, there's. Have you ever seen this? They have a TV that's playing and you can't hear anything, but the you know the subtitles are running and it's Wheel of Fortune. It helps you speed read, though. Right. And I'm just watching Wheel of, you know, I wouldn't normally watch Wheel of Fortune on a bet, but I'm sitting there, I got nothing else to do. So here's this, and there's this delightful young lady, and and two other people are playing with her, and the game starts, and every time she spins, it's like lose your turn or bankrupt. Bankrupt. Right? And I was looking at the expression on her face, and she was not bothered, Bob. I mean, it did not bother her at all. As a matter of fact, the part that just simply shocked me was as these other people were winning, she was genuinely, you could see it in her eyes, that she was like excited for them. And and I was like, I can't believe this woman's attitude. I mean, I would be so upset that I got bankrupt every time I spun the thing, you know? And I was just watching it and I was like, look at this, this is amazing, this woman. I, I was just, and I, I'll never ever forget it because as I did, I said that has to be God because that, that that's just not normal. What she's, you know, the way she's acting towards these other people. You know who won the game, Bob? I I feel it must have been her. Yeah, like from out of nowhere, all of a sudden she wins the triple duper whopper, you know, thingy, and she and and she ends up winning. But her her delight in her own winning was no different than the delight that she had when other people were winning, and I thought. That's that's what I'm seeing right there. That's it. I mean, that's a beautiful thing to see somebody actually rejoice at somebody else's at, at their own expense, at at their own expense. And so I was just sitting there, and I was like, "Okay, God, how do I, how do I get that? What do, you know? What what am I missing? Because <laughs> I, I I know myself too well, Bob, to know that you know when I hit that bankrupt, this is not going to be a happy Robbie. I mean. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> so he took me into the Lord's Prayer, which I just have this never-ending struggle to understand the Lord's Prayer. I, I especially struggle with that, lead us not into temptation, you know? What does that exactly mean? And then deliver us from evil. So interestingly, as I go to pray the next morning, this is after all this shenanigans with my cute whatever, and... um he wants me to look at the word please. And and so when I look at the word please in the Old Testament, what I, what I end up with is actually going into Exodus where it, it talked about not pleasing. A- and in Exodus 21, actually, it says, if she not please her master. And when I looked at that in Hebrew, Bob, the word for not please was the same word as evil. And all of a sudden, it was like a lightning bolt hit my head. Like, you know, God just shows you something. Pay attention, Robbie. Bam, he hits you on the side of the head with this. Wait a minute. I got that this morning. <laughs> yeah, you did, didn't you? Did you yeah. come down here? It said, deliver us from not pleasing. You know, evil is like, oh, I get it. Like, if I'm not pleasing you, whatever that may be in the topic of the whatever i'm not abiding because the whole idea that we're going to bear much fruit right comes from john 15 you says apart from me you can do nothing that 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 phrase just echoes in my mind all the time apart from me you can do nothing so if i am not doing anything that doesn't please him like if i right delivered me from 
not pleasing him, then all of a sudden, you know, there you go. And then, as I was studying the, right, deliver me, or, or you know, lead me not into temptation, I, I looked at closely at Exodus 17, 17, where, it's, where the Lord was, you know, talking about Meribah, and the people were saying, is the Lord among us or not? And that's why they called it testing the Lord. So when you start saying, gee, I'm in a place where God isn't, whatever that looks like, then you're in a place of temptation. And I have this friend who struggles all the time with this feeling of, you know, God's always for everybody else. He's never for me. Everybody else gets what they want. I never get what I want. Mm. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> like the girl, you know, like, <clears throat> and that place right there, that's Meribah. That's like God's not for me. <clears throat> God's not in this. God's not with me. Well, that's not abiding, you see? And so if I can get back to deliver me not from places where I don't think you're there for me, like, oh, my goodness. So we're going to get to your calls here in a minute, I hope. And we got a Christian Car Guy Theater episode 7. This coming up at the end. And so we got all sorts of stuff coming. Stay tuned. So much more Christian Car Guy and Bob coming with you. You're listening to The Truth Network and truthnetwork.com. Let's make some fruit salad today. Oh, oh, oh. Come, Mr. Taliman, tally me banana. Here I come and we want to go home. Strawberry field. Oh, if you could see Bob jumping around in here right this minute, you would see that there is that, one of us that actually can dance to it. If the Orange Blossom <laughs> special don't make your feet move, you might need to see a doctor. <laughs> Fruit salad, yummy, yummy. Today on the Christian Car Guys show, of course, as always, we would love to hear from you, 866-348-7884 and... We are getting into this fruit, but I want to mention, speaking of fruit, you know, we can all improve ourselves. And today on The Cure at 1 o'clock on the Truth Network, Amy Cabo's show, she's going to have Faust Ruggiero. She, he's a therapist speaking about how to improve ourselves. And so that's a live show. It's on 1 o'clock Eastern on the Truth Network, and it's on their app, and um, it's called The Cure. You can get the podcast live, actually, and call in and enjoy that today at 1 o'clock. So... As I was continuing in the Lord's Prayer, trying to figure out how to abide, I don't know if you had ever thought about this, but I, I once, well, I was listening to the Truth Network long before I worked for the Truth Network. This was probably in about 2003. I was listening to James Dobson, and this person was talking, it was focused on the family back then, and they were talking about that this man had lost his wife. And after he lost his wife, of course, he was lonely and needed comfort, and it says he just, he started praying more and more to Jesus, and he said it was kind of like I was picking up the phone, and I was calling Jesus, and he said, and then I got to the point where I never hung up, and it was like, wowzers, like that, that, that's it, that's, that's, that's what I want right there, so how, how do we get to that point, Bob? in our life that we are abiding in, in Christ just l like you've picked up the phone, right? It's so amazing you said pick up the phone because the thing that hit my mind is when you said how do we abide is it's by listening. And then you say pick up the phone, and I was fixing to write it down to make sure I mentioned it, but I get to mention it now. Uh listening to what God's telling you to do and act on it. Um, I ran into a gentleman this week and I knew he'd had some problems in his past as we all have. And, uh, his problems and my problems have a lot of similarities and everything. And I knew I was supposed to talk to him. The first time I saw him, I didn't get a chance to talk to him. We were supposed to get together the next day. Um, yesterday I was going to be leaving, but I told my wife, I says, I have got to talk to this guy before I leave today. And I insisted 
and and she didn't have any problem with it because she knew where the call came from and everything. <laughs> and uh, so I went and I found him, and we uh, had a very 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 good talk. And um, it made a difference in my life if it didn't in his. And I I hope I dropped a little fruit in his basket because uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was a uh, it was fruitful for me. And and it all started by listening. And I ignore God so many times. He'll, you know, okay, Bob, you need to do this. And, and I, you know, do what I want to do instead of what God's told me to do. And that is never fruitful. And uh, it was just such a great feeling. I was sitting there this morning texting with Jerry and uh, seeing if we could swap weeks this month. And God thumped me in the head and said, I wonder if Robbie's got somebody on the, on the show with him this morning. I texted Robbie. I said, do you have a guest? Uh, and he responded that, uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and I jumped in the car and I rode up here. And instead of sitting there on a rainy day, being a couch potato, you know, I got up and I came up here and I get to speak with all y'all and, and definitely has dropped some more fruit in my basket. And, uh, It'd be awesome. Yeah. I mean, he just brings us into community because there's so much in that passage in John 15 about love one another, <clears throat> right? Like we are supposed to love one another. How do we do that? And, and what does that look like? So I wanted to tell a story about some fruit that got dropped in my basket. And then I want to hear your stories, by the way, at 866-348-7884 is when I first got connected with the Truth Network. Actually, I met Stu Epperson, who owns the Truth Network, which now is well over 20 stations. I ended up investing in something that I really never thought, wow, this might be end up being the best, <clears throat> the best investment I ever make in my entire life. But it, it really did turn out that way because I was, I was the car dealer in Moxville, you know, and, and Stu wanted to start this station. He was a good friend of mine, and, and he shows up one day, and, and he's like, Robbie, I want to start this new teaching and talk Christian station. There isn't a format like this in North Carolina that's like what I'm talking about, and I really think this would be good where we can you know, do teaching and talk Christian, not music, just teaching and talk. And this, is, this was his passion. I could see it was. And so would you consider you know, help sponsor this, whatever? And, 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 and so I, I, you know, same thing you did, Bob, at one point in time. You invested the same way in the Truth Network. I know you did. <clears throat> so he, you know, it's a funny story, really, from my point of view. I ended up sponsoring more and more, and as time went on, you know, it, I was investing more and more. But I didn't do it to sell any cars, and I never sold any cars. <clears throat> you know, it was just never happening. And and so this was, you know, 1998, 1999, 2000. So <clears throat> by the time 2006 rolled around and I got called to do the Christian Car Guy show, I mean, you know, when I talked to Stu about doing the show, I said, when I go on the show, I'm going to drop all my advertising. I'm just going to pay you what I've, you know, what I've been paying you. But I don't, want to, I don't want a conflict of interest. Anybody would come buy a car because of, you know, of my affiliation here. So it just seemed like the right thing to do. Well, after I dropped all my advertising, guess what happened, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. but now think about <clears throat> I invested whatever money in all those other radio stations and you, how much money did you spend advertising at 109 uh, yeah mm -hmm. yeah. I spent I don't even want to know how much money I spent well, I do know it was about $20,000 a month when I was in the car business that's what I spent in advertising on other stations and all that I did but the the small amount comparatively that I spent on the Truth Network, think about the fruit of what that ended up being, like would provide my family, not to mention, you know, what it did for the kingdom. Obviously, you know, here I am years later and, and like all I did was listen just a little bit. So what's your story? 866-34-TRUTH, 866-348-7884. You're listening to The Truth Network and truthnetwork.com. I say this calls for action, and now, nip it in the bud. Nip it in the bud. You got to nip it in the bud. Nip it. 
in the bud. You got to nip it in the bud. Nip it in the bud. You got to nip it in the bud. Nip it in the bud. You got to nip it in the bud. Nip it. Nip it. Nip it. Nip it. Nip this sprite in the bud. We're talking about it. Nip it. Nip it. We're just discussing this. Nip it, nip it, nip this sprite in the bud. I've got the answer. Nip it, nip it. And I ain't a nip in the bud. All right, then nip it, nip it. We ought to move in right now. <laughs> All right, then nip it, nip it. My I have to let it run. It's just, well, it's okay. All right, then nip it. Nip yes, it. yes, we're talking fruit All salad, right, yummy, yummy. Nip. In order to have fruit salad, yummy, yummy, Bob, I don't know if you knew this, but you can't let Barney Fife in. Because it'll get nipped in the bud. <laughs> Before it's fruit. Yeah, and there's this beautiful passage in the Song of Solomon, which while I'm waiting on your stories, which I still want your stories, where you bear much from. We only have this one segment because we got Christian Car Guy Theater coming up here in a minute. Like Pilgrim's Progress, Chapter 7, so awesome. I'm going to tell you a little spoiler alert. Valiant is going to make it to the narrow gate, and it's going to be awesome. So you don't want to miss that. But... While I'm waiting on those stories at 866-348-7884, i got to talk about nipping it because I love that. I've always loved it. You might know I love that. But anyway, there's a passage in the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, where it says, you know, he, the, the, the Song of Solomon is the story of actually Jesus being our lover and the church. And so he is calling to us, and, and I love this. He's calling his, for his lover to go away to the vineyards. And, and, you know, I, I, what a romantic thing, right? To get off, to go somewhere with your bride. Well, he wants to do that with us. And, and think about any retreat you ever went on where you went and you got to be at a camp or wherever it was and you got to be alone with him where you could smell the flowers and all that. That's all part of the deal because he wants to get you there where, and then it, it, it says where we can smell the blossoms. But then he says very specifically catch the little foxes nab them grab them little rascals before they nip it in the bud because there's all these distractions bob that will cause the young grapes not to happen so in in apparently in the vineyards back in israel solomon knew that there were these little foxes they were probably some kind of little squirrel that would eat the buds off the off the vines but you had to you have to catch those little devils Right, mm. and, and and the way it actually says it is a pretty in Hebrew is pretty strong. Like you got to nab these little devils. I mean, you got to get them. Nip it in the bud. Don't let them nip. You got to <laughs> nip them little devils before they nip, because otherwise your bud gets. You know, it, it. You know, it's 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 a beautiful thing, and, and so you got to go back to your own life, right? And, and even my prayer life in the morning, I, I have to catch these little rascals because they get me going off. I'm mad at somebody. that I got an email, you know, and I I'm, I'm, I'm start running scripts about what I need to tell them because they've upset me, you know. And I'm supposed to be praying. But it's time to grab that little fox that's going to nip my, you know, little fruit in the bud and let's just get back to Jesus. Let him deal with that. You, you see, Are you seeing the picture, Bob? Absolutely, brother. I, I, I'm smelling what you're stepping in there. <laughs> and so a little different idea of nipping it, right? So it's to make sure we don't get that nipped because in order to bear fruit, right, you're, you're going to need some sap and you're going to need to be connected to the vine. You're going to need to be listening. You're going to have to be in a place where you know God's with you. You can't hang up. Well, as soon as you start taking after people and quit loving on people, Jesus kind of just lets you go on off on where you're going, and, and, and essentially there's no more sap that can get to your fruit. That's pretty awesome. I got to spend, uh, I got to see some of my fruit this week, um, and I hadn't looked at it like that until this morning when you started talking about this, but uh, one of the guys from our youth group, he's grown up now, and he's in the Navy, and he was home, and uh uh, he was spending time with his uh, stepdad, and um, I got the time to hang out with him. We got to play golf together, and we got to fish together, 
and to see somebody that I'd had an impact on their life, and he's definitely had an impact on mine. We were really close back in those days. Uh, but to see what a fine young man he's grown up to be and um, to know that I might have had a little bit of something to do with that, it was just so great for God to show me that fruit, uh, the fruit of our, our, you know, I want to call it labor, but it wasn't labor. It was it was doing what it's I was called right? called to do. You and know? so, you know, how hard is it to go play golf with somebody? But how cool no, was so, it? The labor part was, I mean, <laughs> the the part of the past is, you know, when we, right, you know. Right, I understand. When you were, were teaching. Yeah. But uh, just to see the fruits of, of that was really, really, really awesome because he is a great young man. And uh, he's doing really well in the Navy. And uh, it yeah, was how just cool awesome. he kept your. How did you find out about this? Uh, well, his stepdad had called and told me that uh, he was going to be coming down and uh, that they were going to be doing some stuff. And uh, he had mentioned maybe playing golf. And and uh, I was excited. Uh, it was great to spend time with them. And the fishing just kind of happened. But I uh, got to fish three days with them. Really? Yeah. And. Uh, but he's and just I bet you, fine, you know, Bob, when you think about man. it, you know, 20 years from now, I remember, you know, how that Bob was, you know, I met him at church. I wonder where, you know, that came from. In other words, just like when I looked at that girl on, you know, Wheel of Fortune, you can see God, like, that's something that everybody doesn't have. And so he's reflecting in what it, it glorifies the Father in heaven when you bear much fruit. And it always has to do with loving other people. Hmm. right because yeah, exactly and every time that you know i think i'm doing something for somebody else it always <laughs> ends up that uh oops hey i'm the one that got the blessing here right you know? right right that's what i was talking about <laughs> what i was talking about investing in the truth network like i was doing all this for no reason other than just to support what i knew was good you know christian broadcasting and all you know it just seemed like the thing to do right and then, oh my goodness, did it end up blessing me, my family? Like, who would know that that would be my livelihood for the next, you know, it's 13 years since I've worked full time for Truth Broadcasting. Never would have guessed it. Pretty amazing stuff. It's it's wild how hey, what we we start out thinking something's going to be. Oh, wait a minute, God's got another plan. You know, here let me show you what it's really all about. Oh, really? Because I look back and I go. I, here was this little bitty amount that I paid to the Truth Network. There was this gigantic amount that I paid to everybody else. And I think, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you had a business to run, and, 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 and obviously we needed to sell the cars, and that was the way that I supported my family at the time. And, and that advertising worked like your advertising. Just, just had to make the best decisions you could. And Which gets back to the, the Lord's Prayer, what we were talking about, right? It's like, if it's pleasing him, it's not evil. But if it's not pleasing him, it is evil, right? And and don't let me go someplace where I'm not thinking you're with me and for me. You know, let me stay in that place and, and think about, you know, I've been doing that all week, actually, like, as I was thinking about different decisions going, is this, you know, actually, one time I was going to, should I get a soda or should I drink water? Well, uh, that's a pretty good, <laughs> boy. That's a toughie there, isn't it? Because <laughs> all these antibiotics, I'm thirsty all the time. So he's like, water, you know? Okay, all right, all right. But it's a beautiful little touchstone to go. Hmm, is it? Is this going to please God? Is this going to lead me someplace where I'm growing closer to God? Is this going to lead me someplace where I'm going further away? Is this going to keep me someplace where I'm not hanging up the phone? Or is this going to be someplace where I feel like I'm 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 getting closer, and that's why I'm so glad. i you know it's beyond cool that God would have you come this morning, Bob. Yeah, I, you tickled me when you mentioned the soda or the water. When I was younger, I drank a bunch of soda, and it didn't show up. But if I drink it now, it like lingers around my belt line, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I I just it's become a permanent thing for me. The water is always a better call than the sodas, but I sure did love Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could picture you dancing to the orange blossom special and drinking your Mountain Dew. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's we'll go with that. <laughs> well, I should mention the Jesus labor love. We had such a tremendous week. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You may know that we've had this 
83-year-old widow that we desperately need a car for, and it looks like we've had a car donated and the money to fix it up for her, and, and we're, we're really, really, really excited about that. Um, I'm, I'm excited about this other car that we had that, that we were wondering how in the world we were going to get it fixed and ready for another single mom that was out there, a young single mom that can't get a job until she gets a car, and that money was provided. You know, all there at ChristianCarGuy.com, where you can also find, right, the upcoming Christian Car Guy Theater, all the past episodes of Pil- Plymouth Progress, if you want to catch up, because you're going to hear the next installment. Believe me, Valiant is on his way to the narrow turnpike, and it's going to be awesome, so stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for listening to the Christian Car Guy show today. You're listening to The Truth Network and truthnetwork.com. And now time for Christian Car Guy Theater with today's episode, The Plymouth Progress, Part 7. The Plymouth Progress is purposefully and completely based on John Bunyan's classic, The Pilgrim's Progress. Today's episode 7 is at ChristianCarGuy.com, both as a podcast with episodes 1 through 6, so you can easily catch up with the series, but also you can find a follow-along of the original book for today's episode, and most importantly, the scripture references that go along with today's episode, and those help greatly in the interpretation of The Plymouth Progress all at christiancarguy.com. After this, Edsel Evangelist called aloud to the heavens for confirmation of what he had said. And with that, there came words and fire out of the mountain, under which poor Plymouth Valiant stood. That made the paint of his fenders delaminate. As many as are the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth, not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Now Valiant looked for nothing but death and began to cry out lamentably, even cursing the time in which he met with Wagoneer worldly wisemen, still calling himself a thousand fools for hearkening to his counsel. He also was greatly ashamed to think that it was this sedan's arguments, flowing only from the flesh, should have the prevalency with him to cause him to forsake the right way. This done, he applied himself again to Edsel Evangelist. Sir, what think you? Is there hope? May I now go back and go up to the narrow turnpike? Shall I not be abandoned for this and sent back from thence ashamed? I am sorry I have hearkened to this sedan's counsel, but may my sin be forgiven? Hmm? Thy sin is very great, for by it thou hast committed two evils. Thou hast forsaken the way that is good, to tread in forbidden paths. Yet will the guard at the turnpike receive thee, for he has good will for sedans. Only take heed that thou turn not aside again, lest thou perish from the way when his wrath is kindled. Valiant then kissed Edsel right on the grill, (sighs) gave him one smile and bid him Godspeed. So he went on with haste. Neither spake he to any sedan by the way, nor if he asked him, would he vouchsafe them an answer. He went like one that was all the while treading on forbidden ground and could by no means think himself safe, till again he was got into the way which he left to follow Wagoneer Worldly Wiseman's counsel. So in the process of time, Valiant got up to the turnpike. Now over the gate there was written, Knock, and it shall be open to you. He knocked, therefore, more than once or twice, saying, May I now enter here, for he within open to sorry me, though I have been an undeserving rebel, then I shall not fail to sing his lasting praise on high. At last there came a grave pickup to the gate named GMC Goodwill, who asked who was there, and where he came from, and what would he have. Here is a poor burdened sinner. The good sedan Edsel Evangelist findeth me, Plymouth Valiant under Mount Sinai from the City of Destruction. But I am going to Mount Zion, that I may be delivered from the wrath to come. 
I would therefore, sir, since I am informed that by this turnpike is the way thither, ask you if you are willing to let me in. Oh, I am willing with all my heart. And with that, GMC opened the turnpike. So when Valiant was driving in, all of the sudden, GMC gave him a pull. Huh? What means this? A little distance from this turnpike, there is erected a strong castle, of which Beetle Beelzebub is the captain. From thence, both he and them that are with him shoot arrows at those that come up to this turnpike, if haply they may die before they can drive in. I rejoice and tremble. So when Valiant was got in, the pickup of the turnpike asked Valiant, who directed him thither? Edsel Evangelist bid me come hither and knock as I did, and he said that you, sir, would tell me what I must do. An open door is set before thee, and no man can shut it. <sighs> now I begin to reap the benefits of my hazards. But how is it that you came alone? Because none of my neighbors saw their dangers, I saw mine. Did any of them know of your coming? Yes, my wife and children saw me at the first, and called after me to turn again. Also, some of my neighbors stood crying and calling after me to return. But I rolled up my windows as not to hear, and so came on my way. But did none of them follow you to persuade you to go back? Yes, both old's obstinate and Prius pliable, but when they saw that they could not prevail, old's went railing back, but Prius came with me a little way. But why did he not come, though? We indeed came both together until we came at the mega mud puddle of despond, into the which we also suddenly fell. And then was my neighbor Prius discouraged, and would not adventure further. Wherefore, getting out again on that side next to his own garage, he told me I should possess the brave country alone for him. So he went his way, and I came mine. He after old's obstinate, and I to this turnpike. Alas, poor Sedan, is the celestial glory of so small esteem with him that he counteth it not worth running the hazards of a few difficulties to obtain it? Truly I have said the truth of Prius Pliable, and if I should also say all the truth of myself, it will appear there is no betterment betwixt him and myself. It is true he went back to his own garage, but I also turned aside to go in the way of death, being persuaded thereto by the carnal arguments of one wagoneer, worldly wise man. Oh, did he light upon you? He would have had you a sought for ease at the hands of Lexus legality. They are both of them a very cheat. But did you take his counsel? Yes, as far as I durst. I went to find Lexus legality until I thought that the mountain that stands by his garage would have fallen upon my head. Wherefore, there I was forced to stop. That mountain has been the death of many, and will be the death of many more. It is well you escaped being by it dashed in pieces. I truly, I do not know what had become of me there, had not Etzel Evangelist happily met me again. Thankfully, Etzel Evangelist findeth me under Mount Sinai, and I was musing in the midst of my dumps. But it was God's mercy that he came to me again, or else I had never come hither. But now I am come, such a one as I am more fit indeed for death by that mountain than thus to stand talking with my lord. But oh, what a favor is this to me, that yet I am admitted entrance here, and there are no turnings nor windings by which a stranger may lose his way. We make no objections against any, notwithstanding all that they have done before they come hither. They are in no wise cast out, and therefore, good valiant, come a little way with me, and I will teach thee about the way thou must go. Look before thee. Dost thou see this narrow way? That is the way thou must go. It was cast up by the patriarchs, prophets, Christ, and his apostles and it is as straight as a rule can make it. This is the way thou must go. Uh, are there no turnings, nor windings by which a stranger may lose his way? Yes, there are many ways, but down upon this, and they are crooked and wide. But thus thou mayest distinguish the right from the wrong, the right only being straight and narrow. Tune in soon for the next exciting adventure in the Plymouth Progress. 
Now here's Danny Dipstick and Randy Radiator to review today's episode. Uh, Randy, a turnpike sounds kind of fishy to me. <laughs> yeah, Danny. Oh, but you know, this isn't the first time I'm herring this. <laughs> herring. Oh, boy. You know, maybe we should scale back on the fish puns, Danny. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be the sole survivor. <laughs> oh, boy. Sorry, Danny. I can't help myself with the fish puns. <laughs> you know, you know, with GMC Goodwill, did, did you see the care he had even for the lost olds and Prius? I love the way he told Valiant to come in with all his heart. Boy, you could see why God chose him for the narrow turnpike. Hey, Daddy, <laughs> why is ice cream so bad at tennis? <laughs> Randy, I don't know. Because it, it has a soft serve. <laughs> oh, boy, Daddy. Say goodbye, Daddy. <laughs> See you later, Radiator. You're listening to The Truth Network and truthnetwork.com.